well, why are white people or why are black people dissatisfied with white people? Hi, guys. Welcome to Kenganda. This is the Reap Pat Podcast. My name is Johnita Meyer and... My name is DJ Maintain, Caribbean, living in Kampala for five years now. Big up. Okay. And My name is Tina, Woo! Ugandan with a red passport. Okay. I like that. <laughs> O'Shea Duke Jackson, 100% African-American, 1,000% controversial. That is true. <laughs> You had him. Now, uh, I recently came across a certain video uh, on Twitter that mm -hmm. I wanted to um, react to with you guys. So just watch this with me. Mm -hmm. So if, if you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the <laughs> away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. Right, this can't be fixed. Um, you had the man? The video is quite long, but... Yeah. Um, this is Court Adams. He's a cartoonist. Yep. What do you guys think about this? Man, okay, well, let's start with you. Well, so uh, Mr. Scott Adams is a very talented cartoonist. There's a, I believe the cartoon is called Dilbert or Delbert. I think it's yeah. Dilbert. I've been looking at the cartoon since I was a kid. It's in most American newspapers. And so because he said this, it's been canceled. Yeah, he's been um, dropped. Yeah, he's been dropped. Oh, he okay. went, smart guy, Good. went to UC Berkeley, got an MBA. Um, but obviously you must not care about his career now because he's, he's made enough money where he could just say how he feels, which I honestly believe he is not alone in how he feels. And, um, you know, to be real, like if he's, if he feels that way, I mean, I don't really have a, an issue with it. I think my issue is, well, why are white people or why are black people dissatisfied with white people? And I'm not the liberal on this podcast. I'm the one that holds the feet to the fire of the blacks. But now I'm going to have to go to the liberal playbook. So you mean to mean to tell me black people woke up one day and they just upset at white folks out the blue for no reason. He's not giving no context. Yeah, Great he's point. just saying a poll. You know, well, you know, yeah. we want to be honest. You went to Berkeley. Obviously, you must not be that smart at, at, at debating or having common sense. You can get a professional degree and still be very stupid. Black nice. people didn't just wake up in the morning and be like, I don't like those white people because they're white. There's a reason why. I'm not even going to go into the reason why. I mean, you ever heard of slavery? I mean, you know, you ever heard of redlining, maybe? I mean, talk about Black History Month. So we can, we can go there. So there are reasons why black people feel uncomfortable being around white people. And that is because white people's historical interference with blacks wherever they go. It would be different if that wasn't the case, but that is the case. So one thing I noticed about unaccountability, I deal with, with, with blacks on this channel, but I noticed a lot of unaccountable people are whites. Yeah. Well, why do you feel that way? Well, I don't know why you feel that way. Are you sure? There's a reason why. I mean, look at South Africa. You have like most of the population there black and those who own everything are white. So there's a reason why blacks feel the certain way that they feel. So if you want to, if you want to talk about why that is, then let it be the case, but you don't do that. You want to just prove your points that get away from blacks for whatever else to keep. So that's the first thing. Secondarily, he talks about the crime that are in uh, the chin. If you have all these blacks, then they're, they're criminal. They're savage. That's the same thing that being said about blacks all, all, all along. Which is okay. That's for a racist white man. Fine. But now when we had like, uh, you know, Black Tulsa, uh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, what was it called? Um, Tulsa Massacre. You, you, when we had communities in, 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 in yeah. certain black communities. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. Yeah. Well, what did, what, what, what did y'all do? I mean, so, you know, exactly. so whenever you saw these blacks trying to do something, well, what happens? Now, there is a correlation between blacks and criminality. 
But did you have anything to do with that? And what white people don't want to take accountability for is we are your children in America. We are what you wanted us to become. So if we're not acting the way that you trained us because we didn't speak your language and all that, now you want to remove yourself from that. You know, I talked about, you know, before I let you move the mic along, there's like the guy who's the fire chief. He sets the fire. I told you he goes up oh, to the yeah, hill yeah. and he jerks off to the fire. And then he goes down and puts it out. Right? Mm. It's the same thing here. So when blacks are not doing what you want them to do, what did you want them to become? We are what you wanted us to become. And now you want to separate yourself from how they feel now. Which is, which is yeah. silly. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I'm um, Tina. Um, yeah, so I'm agreeing with O'Shea. For, for the, the first, first time. time. <laughs> <Right>? Woo! <laughs> but only because like it's the irony of like a racist white man talking about redlining and saying, so I had to move to this white neighborhood as if it was so hard for him to do. Like when like systematically black people are being kept out of white neighborhoods globally, like it doesn't make sense. So you didn't move, you stayed exactly where you were. But my thing is... Um, I don't know. This this whole talking point, I feel like it's attention seeking and I feel like a lot of people do it on the internet, right? Because mm -hmm, yeah. black outrage is marketable. Mm -hmm. Like even from like an intellectual Ooh. standpoint, they always do it to like something as mediocre as Love Island, like black outrage is probably the most marketable thing, right? So they piss us off. We get talking, we get watching, but <sighs> I don't know. It's like... I've never heard anyone say, let's go to this white spot. Like, I've never heard it being said. So, like, you look for us and where we've looked for you. My mom said something to me a few years ago where she was like, the black people in these European or Western states, they're just the chickens coming home to roost. Because if you'd minded your business to begin with and left us alone, we wouldn't be here. Mm. We really would. They legit came and carried people on boats. Right. And brought them back home with them. Mm -hmm. And now they don't want them there. <laughs> like, it doesn't make yeah, sense. any sense. Then, like, then you forget how black people got there. <laughs> like, exactly. we just appeared like plants. We just like, grew, <laughs> appeared. Yeah, mm -hmm. You brought to, us here and now it's like, you're mad. But mm -hmm. yeah, I just feel like it's a blessing to be black. They all want to be us. Mm -hmm. When they don't, they all want to talk about us. Okay. Too. And yeah. Okay. Um, my opinion on it is that um, there's too many people on social media like him with dangerous views mm -hmm. and very little to back it up. Yeah. And um, I'm glad he's been cancelled. I'm glad he's lost his job because what he's saying is is founded in is not founded in anything. It's just him ranting and, like you say, trying to get views because mm -hmm. you know black outrage mm -hmm. gets you viral mm -hmm. nowadays, unfortunately. So. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm glad he's gone. Yeah, and what gets me is his lack of accountability because he's saying, oh, yeah. it's not me, but there's yeah. a certain poll. So st statistics yeah, what poll, are what poll? saying that black people don't like white people. So it's not but my we thinking. don't like them. And mm -hmm. that's okay. That thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what it is? For me, I don't trust them. Like every white person I've met, whether it be when I was growing up, going to school, college, whatever, I have to... And I and it's and it's 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 stressful because you just want to form some form of friendship so you can just keep moving forward. But you have to work out whether they're racist or not first mm -hmm. before you know. What I mean, you decide whether to interact with this person. Yeah. Do you remember so, the first time you realized that though? Like yeah. the first time you because yeah. I remember like being like in year nine yeah. and someone saying to me like, "All oh, white people are racist." And I was like, no, that's not true. Because mm. I went to a school just outside London, year nine, in Leicester. And the majority of my friends were whites. And when I started the school, <coughs> it was me and two other black girls. Mm -hmm. But when you're black in the UK, it's like you separate into your countries. Mm. And Uganda, there's no like diaspora representative like growing up. So it's like you go with the white kids. And my Zimbabwean friends are like, all oh, those guys are racist. I'm like, no, they're not. So one of my friends was talking about her boyfriend and she was just like, yeah, he's such a thug. He's so, I'm just like, oh. 
<laughs> so they were right And I remember realising that And being like She doesn't mean it from Like an ill place But just inherently mm. She's programmed to fear us mm -hmm. To look down on us So that's mm -hmm. when I'm like Yeah Yeah <laughs> We'll have to bleep that out um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I, when you watch the video, he also talks about the level of education. He says he doesn't live in areas where the level of education is low. Okay. But statistically, black women are the most educated globally. Yeah, you know what? I feel like black women do PhDs for fun. Like the board. Fun, like, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll just do well. a course. I'll just do some. I'll just get a degree You'll here. find a black 35-year-old still in uni just because he can. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just wants to study. He could yeah. work, but it's like... <laughs> It's banter, like, let me study some yeah. more. So. I do get bored and sign up for courses. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. You, you never stop learning. True. But uh, later on in the video, he said something about mm -hmm. uh, with, um, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't care. But yeah, I think he said something like, there's no payback when you help black people, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And me personally, when I help someone, I'm helping you because one, I'm in a position to. Yeah. And two, I feel compelled to. Right. I'm not going to look at my watch or my calendar two years later and like, mm -hmm. ah, you know what? I didn't get that payback. <laughs> Is that what you do it for? But isn't that white saviorism though, right? There so they go. help us so that they can be patted on the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can be told like, oh my God, you help these yeah. black poor people out. You're such a good person. Yeah. No. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Uh, not uh, at all. You, let me just say this. Um, what are you saying is for me, outside of those lies about why blacks are, but if you want to separate and be a white separatist, I actually have no problem with that, which is probably one of the reasons why I came here. Yeah. Sure. But you know, I think a lot of the, the, the people in America feel like, you know, because of the Black Lives Matter and you got a lot of white outrage or what I would consider, you know, fake white, white outrage and you have people like George Soros that fund these things and stuff like that. And we have a lot of Democrats. So believe in the George Soros thing. I mean, Isn't that anti blackness well, as well. Well, 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 whoever whoever donates to Black Lives Matter, the majority it's, it's of people. The concept are, that we can't establish anything on our own. Yes. And that we need a white man to establish. No, no, I agree. Us, I agree. So, right? so let, me, let me finish it. So, so you're right. So the, the thing is that a lot of blacks feel like, the, like when George Floyd happened, you had Black Lives protests all over the world London, Amsterdam, all major cities in the Western world. And it gave black people the idea like, oh, these white people are standing together with us. And then they return to their lives, to their communities with, and they live largely away from us, which is no different. Like if you look at Chicago, it's not in the Republican state. Illinois is heavily democratic now, but Chicago is one of the most racially segregated cities in America. Blacks live on one side and whites live on the other side. You see that a lot in America. And I think what, 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 what blacks have to understand is what he's saying, a lot of whites believe that. Whether or not they'll come out and admit it and lose their job, most won't. But white people, will they'll be on your defense, hey, black lives matter. And then, hey, you know, hey, we're going to go back. We don't want you Negroes living next to us. And if so many of you move over here, no matter what your education level is, we have a term for it called white flight. When too many blacks move in, and it doesn't matter, for our talented African brothers, you think you're not us, to, if so many of you move into a white neighborhood, they're gone because the fact that you're black, they don't want, you know, Congolese music playing all night or African-American music playing. All night. They're gone. So white people feel like that in general. They have always felt like that. And you know what? It's not good. He's right. One thing you're right about it is it's never going to change. It's not going to change. And we don't need to make it change because we are not their people. Now, are there good white people? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I always give a shout out to Dr. Patrick Brown, formerly of the University of Virginia, PhD in anatomy. He was over the post back program at UC Berkeley. He's one of the main team people. One of the reasons why if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today in, 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 in my, on my path. So you have white people who even helped Dr. King, white folks who helped the ANC, Joseph Koso Kosovo. So we're not talking about the whites who actually don't care about this, because if, if it wasn't for whites, we wouldn't have civil rights or abolitionists. So we know that. But for people like him, a lot of whites feel like that. And it's not just him. It's Indians, Russians, people in America, Asians. They don't want you dealing with they don't want to deal with blacks. They don't want you dealing with their daughters. 
are their sons. That's, that's even here in Uganda. You don't go find blacks dealing with Indians in here in, in Nairobi and Kenya, South Africa. You're not going to find it. So many people feel like he does towards us. Now we need to wake up and understand that's the energy. Now, what are we going to do about it? Because when we start to think about that, then we start to do it for who? For self. Like they do for self. And they want to be over there. That's our indication to not get mad, but to do something for our people. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was reading one of the comments and um, someone commented the fact that he was in support of what this man was saying. And he's saying, oh, you can also see with the rappers, when they get money, they get out of the hood. Yep, it's so very true. He was true. asking, why is that? He was asking. Because in the hood, the mentality is crabs in a barrel, right? So regardless of race, like when you look at like Birmingham, for example, the majority of the quote unquote hoodlands are Asian and white, right? But Birmingham is Birmingham, Alabama, and Birmingham, no, England. Birmingham, Birmingham in the UK, in the, um, okay. the, in the Midlands. Because Birmingham, Alabama. I feel like the Midlands <laughs> became give you the, the truth. Brixton, <laughs> and I went to uni in Cov, and it's like it went from like beautiful to like shootouts at three p.m. I swear to God, Coventry in Coventry. Wow, I heard yeah. about Coventry. Yeah, Coventry became like Brixton, and it's like it's not just. There's race, yes, but there's social economic things that come into play, right? So if you're going to segregate a certain group of people, limit them, remove all the resources. I don't know if you remember, like growing up in the UK, maybe in the 2000s, early 2000s, there was youth centers everywhere, community yeah, centers. Yeah, yeah. There was things to keep people active, right? Because ethnic minorities typically do those longer hour jobs right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so black and brown moms don't have as much time to dedicate to their children as white people do because they work nine to five right they can be present and that's not because anyone's worth more or less it's just the way the system is created so if black and brown kids are committing crimes that is the moment when you have to step outside of race and just look at it from like a socioeconomic point of view yeah. do you get it it has nothing to do with it so when that guy said the thing of we commit the most crimes. That's if he's so educated, then he would know that crime is based on proximity. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, people talk about like black on black crime. Again, a myth. White on white crime statistically is more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Than black on black crime. Mm -hmm. You're going to commit a crime within the group of people that you live. And the messed up thing with the world that we're in right now, especially in the Western world, segregation is a real thing. Mm. In school, in prison. Oh, yeah. On the road. People segregate themselves with the people that Definitely they identify with. And race is a big identifier. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, black people commit the most crimes. No, sir. That is your white brother who commits the most crimes. It's just that my crimes are heightened and, and highlighted for the world. Because, again, to push that agenda of mm. I'm a savage. I don't mm -hmm. know how to behave. Mm -hmm. But white, not even just white people, but even Asian people, the crimes that are committed within their own community are really high. But well, I'm not going to say, oh, Asians are violent. That doesn't make sense. Right. It's just they live amongst mm -hmm. each other. So they're going to, quote unquote, kill each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Great point. This educated man sounded very <laughs> uneducated. Let me, yeah. For real. Yeah. Let me just add this for a little bit. Maintain. A lot of white people are also, in America, I've noticed this trend. A lot of white people are tired of apologizing for being white. Meaning that, they feel like, okay, look, I'm a white person. So, you know, in America, I may not have the same privilege as my great grandfather had in 1940. So now I'm apologizing for something that I didn't do or didn't happen to me. So now I feel like I must be compelled to go and do something. You know, the white man's burden in reverse. So the, at first, the white man's burden was to civilize blacks in Africa, <laughs> right? Our blacks in the world. That was yeah. the white man's burden's point. That's what he said. Yeah. We have the right to civilize you. Near, even um, King Baudouin, mm -hmm. and when they took the, gave the Congolese their, their, their um, independence, he said that, look, we civilized you guys. So you can go on forth. We taught you how to behave like people. And then that's when Lamuma said, you guys are the biggest atrocities that happened before we got here. Like we were doing yeah. okay before you got here. Yeah. And then they killed him. But a lot of white people in the Western world are tired of apologizing for being white. So they felt like, okay, I'm white. I'm wrong because I'm white. <clears throat> so let me help these black people when 
you know, as a white man, I don't have the same privilege that my grandfather had 70 years ago, which is. But they do, though. Well, this is, well, I'm, I'm saying they may, they but think, yeah. th- what they think about is oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as a group of white people, they see their country in the United States, Wait, they're losing. Theirs, though? Not theirs, but what they feel is theirs. So let's just <laughs> talk about what they feel. Yeah, yeah. It, we're losing control. I remember California was a Republican state. Mm-hmm. Now California is whites are declining in population in America. Not that blacks are rising because we're not, but the Hispanics are stronger. And a lot of white Hispanics don't identify with being white. Right. They identify being Hispanic. So now white people are tired of, you know, look, every time we have to apologize. So when I'm helping these black people, I could be helping my own people. And let me just say something. Um, everybody feels like that. Like how the guy feels. I'm not justifying it, but I'm, I, I've heard how they feel. We got to stop. That's why, you got, that's why you started when Black Lives Matter came out. What was the response of it? Yeah. White Lives Matter, right? Yeah. Why did White Lives Matter come out? Because white people got tired of, hey, you know, even though, look, my grandfather did this. So, hey, we matter also. So there's a big disdain in America growing with white people who are tired of apologizing to be white. So if that's his position, I see where he's trying to say it. Not that I agree with it. Yeah. But we got as blacks, we got to know that that's 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 one step closer to what I feel ultimately will happen, which is a race war. And, and, and I think eventually and Charles Manson said this was the battle of Armageddon where blacks and whites and this is Charles Manson is crazy, right? Mm. But he said at one point, blacks and whites have to fight. And what the guy is indicating, he said, what? It can't be fixed. So if it can't be fixed, then eventually we may be dead and gone, but it's going to go there. Do you know what? It feels like that as a black man. It feels man, like that, yeah. Dealing with what I've had to deal with up to this point, it feels like that. Yeah. Definitely feels like that. The battle between black and white, I think, is something that ultimately will be decided even if it sticks and stones. I don't know when. I don't know how. Mm. But, you know, whoever's kingdom is going will will, will someday have to change hands. And, you know, like William Tubman said, there is no revolution without bloodshed. Right? Just like in Africa. So if blacks are to ever have power, they're going to have to fight for it. Right? So now the thing is that, and I'm not indicating that it should be there, but that's where we're going. I believe in the next 100, 200 years. That's a lot, you know. It might be a lot sooner. Might be a lot sooner, mm-hmm. but the but the reason is these white people are. And one thing about white people, will fight. They will take their kids to look. We're gonna take you out there. We're hunting. We're storing food. <laughs> we're gonna. Do, white people will do that. White people are some of the greatest. We we know blacks can can can, can fight too, but white people are sad, can, can can do some savage crazy stuff. Yeah. They can, and they will even admit it because in order to take the world, you got to be crazy. Mm-hmm. So why people don't mind fighting if they need to, and they will do it. They have done it. So they're preparing their kids for these things to come. You know, that's why you got the, the prepping channels, the survivalism channels, and ain't blacks doing that. It's white people doing that. They got, you know, hey, here's how you fight and you, you leave your kids in the woods for four or five days. They can do it. <laughs> they yeah. do? It. They, hell yeah, they do it. They love camping. Yeah, why people the, 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 off the yeah. grid, they preparing. <laughs> mm. Why people prepare for what they see is going to happen and they're going to, and before they just give up, they're not going to give up without no fight, right? But you, but you know why that is, right? Why? Because when they're totally honest with themselves, they, they say, if black people did to us what we've done to them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what would we do? Exactly. So they're prepping themselves for the day something may click because it's happened in little spots. Mm. Mark Duggan in London. Yeah. Rodney King in America. Mm-hmm. And, and even more. Mm-hmm. So little things have happened that showed that when the, the rage is outpouring onto mm. the streets, mm-hmm. which I don't really agree with because we never do it in, you know, like we never go to Oxford Street and start smashing windows. We do it in... Mm, in our community. From. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Counterproductive. Yeah, exactly. So um, they feel it. Yeah. So but there's something that's so mm. pure about black rage, even if it's counterproductive. Like I'm yeah, allowed yeah. to rage because systematically... You've had your foot on my neck for hundreds of years. So mm. I don't care because at the end of the yeah. day, it's, it's how I'm feeling. So there's this show called The Good Fight. Um, it's like on CBS Paramount. 
But I love it because it's like a legal show, but like they tackle like proper issues. Mm -hmm. So like the final season, they tackled like a quote unquote civil war Mm -hmm. in the States, right? Between like not just blacks and whites, but essentially Nazi whites and everybody else, Mm -hmm. right? And I think when you look at, and they were tackling like um, social media propaganda and what Mm -hmm. that can do, it literally is programming young kids for that quote unquote civil war type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how, when you said that, I was like, it's not very far fetched. It could happen a lot sooner than we think because people are actually building their kids in like a realm of hate, but Mm -hmm. that's like cloaked in quote unquote allyship. Mm. It's like, no, no, I love black people. I'm not racist, Mm -hmm. but like uh, maintain said the thing of if we did to them, Mm. if they did to us what we did to them, what would we do? And I think as black people have been programmed to turn the other cheek. Yes. You know, be and be the bigger person. Yes. Forgive. Because when we react, our reactions are not measured the same way white people's exactly. reactions are. So we react in a lesser yes. sort of way. Whereas them, they don't care. No. Like, yeah, we have to think about, I can't remember his name. And no one needs to remember his name. But the kid that walked into the supermarket in the black neighborhood. In Buffalo. Just started in Buffalo. Yeah, just started shooting, shooting people. people. Yeah. That is programmed hate. Yep. You're built to hate and not just, and hate is like drawn from fear. Yep. So he hates you, but he's scared of you. And not just like you as a being, but what can you be the moment that you topple me? Right. And you're better than me. Right. Because one thing about them tables, they will always turn. Right. So we're, we're getting to that point in life where white people are going to be and I don't think they're going to be as kind as us, guys. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. And look at Dylan Roof. No. Dylan Roof in South Carolina was very similar. He shot like, once no. in church. The yeah. church. That, that was Dylan Roof. That was crazy. But you'll never see blacks doing that. But the thing is this. Because we respect God. <laughs> <laughs> we fear Jesus God. is white, but they don't yeah. give a heck. And then the thing, that's <laughs> how you see so many blacks interested in coming to, why is the Repat podcast, I think, is so much interest? Because people want to get, people see what's happening in America. Everybody can sense. Okay, look. And if UK? I yeah, if I if I get to Africa, when this shit pops off, yeah. I won't be there. Straight. That's why you have so much interest in the year of return or what's going on in Uganda. Because black people like they already know. Like even when we like in the 1800s, when the African American community and some of the Caribbeans were coming to either Sierra Leone or, or Liberia, mm-hmm. so you had a chance. You could stay in America, yeah, or you can. Be your own person in Africa. Yeah. And some people stayed and some left. And the reason why they left was like, look, I'm going to go on this journey to Africa, but I can be a man or a woman there. And I think that's what you're seeing here. Um, I think also we should be alert of people because that's the first step. What he's singing. We stay away from black people. That's step number one. Then the next step is violence. So the first step is stay away. And then if you don't stay away, and white folks have no problem with defending themselves. So you you know where that's going. So I think black people in America need to stop, need to start understanding what's going on. Um, and they're going to cancel the guy. But the people that are going to cancel him feel the same way. I mean, look at hip hop. We know who runs hip hop. Yeah. Like the things that people are seeing in hip hop, they can cancel you, but we know what they're allowing people to say. And what they really want us to do is destroy ourselves. That's yeah. the ultimate goal. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. hip hop for me was was my Google as a kid. Yes. Right? I learned about Black Panthers, Malcolm X through Public Enemy Records. Yes. Now, that's not what they want. No. So, like, no, I don't want to sound like that old, that old guy like, dissing modern hip hop. Mm-hmm. But I've got to keep it real. There's less and less and less conscious lyrics. Right. Oh, yeah. There, and that's by design. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah, yeah, people like Common back in the day. That was just like, every rapper had something. Talib Kweli, yeah, like I'm Chuck not, D, preach. You know what but, I mean? You know, but it's just like I'm. Just, anyway, Professor Griff, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Public yeah that's Professor Griff. because Ex-clan. white men do run the music industry. Yeah. Can we accept that? They do. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, just said it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so they're gonna they're gonna dictate what and, you can and can't say. And a lot of people feel like this guy, and it's not just white people who feel like that. Even can I black say this? People do. Let's talk about that. Yeah, really. It's a lot mm-hmm. of African Americans that feel like that. Even Africans. Africans yeah. that feel like that. He ain't wrong. 
And yeah. Africans will be, will be in the comments saying, preach, brother. African Americans are saying, preach, brother. Because another thing, too, is white people have allies who do their dirty bidding. And a lot of blacks resonate with what he's saying. And you'd be surprised how many blacks yeah. with black wives and black children will be a fan of something that's saying like that, selling out, right? Mm -hmm. But they're talking about your black ass too. So we have a lot of people that feel like that. I've, to be real, can I be honest? I've had moments where I feel like that too. And you know, er, everybody, everybody, <laughs> all black people have moments of I'm tired of you Negroes. You, you know, I mean? was raised yeah. in a house of um, stay away from those black people. I grew up like in Crouch Hill, Muswell Hill, like white schools, oh, only me. black kill you. Rich, uh, no, 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 no. as in I grew up there, and my <laughs> yeah. dad made it a point where it was like, stay away from those black people. Mm -hmm. You have a boyfriend, make sure he's not. Black, like, whoa, my, yeah, I love you, daddy, but exposed, he needs to decolonize exposed. his mind mm. because he's very, like, in that, right? So yeah. he's like, stay away from they'll, they'll bring you down, yeah, they'll do this. He's like, how can I send you to England and you're just with black people? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's thinking, how, like, yeah. where yeah, yeah. you know, try, like, yeah. I yeah. love yeah. him, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the yeah. private school exactly. mentality, I've yeah, it's private and it's school. Just, and you, and I went to public schools mm. actually because just because of the neighborhoods that I was mm. in, the public schools were of that level of oh, where yeah, Muswell Hill, yeah, Muswell Hill, known for Hill and I grew schools. up yeah, there yeah. till I got to secondary school, late secondary year ten, uh, and then we moved to Stamford Hill, and oh, the local wow. school didn't have spaces, uh, so then I went to Northumberland Park, which is Tottenham, to proper Tottenham, exactly, and that's when I was like, oh shit, so people. I'm black. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And Love and life. I thank God for that experience because, mm. yeah, sometimes you might not get it at home, even as black people, but mm. you need to find it outside a hundred percent. But yeah, no, it's again, anti-blackness, but mm. white people are to blame, not Negroes. Here we go. Wait till my closing remarks. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we have to... actually reached our closing <laughs> remarks, guys. Cool. Close this out. Um, what do you have to tell the people about this man? About this cartoonist? You know what? People like him need to stay away from us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I agree with him. Yeah. Yeah. People like him, I think by way of being white, he's lied to us that he's educated. But factually, he's very inaccurate. So. Yeah. And you can see by what he's saying. Mm. Yeah. You've been getting, you've been getting favors and leg ups mm -hmm. and lifts up. And you said oh. Berkeley as if white men need anything to get into like Ivy League colleges. Like <laughs> just being white with the is enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Last um, remarks. Yeah, so let me be a little I'm gonna try to be short, but um yeah, I agree with what they said. Um, but also, you know, for the the whites who feel like that, whatever, right? But I want to yeah. close with this. But the but the blacks that feel like that, that's who we want to reach today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe because you know, the blacks that feel like that are why we don't have anything. And I want to talk about um just you know, you know George Macon. I was having some problems here in Uganda last year with this I won't tell you about who it was or who how many people it was I was having a lot of problems and he said you know what brother you know when you're dealing with with blacks they're going to lie and they're going to steal but that's the process that if you want to clean up your people you want to go through that if you really want to deal with your people you got to understand they're not going to be at the level that you're at and sometimes the people that talk like him that are black where on our side, like we are today, and then got disgruntled and changed teams. I've been close here in Uganda many times, right? Uh, but I want to say one thing is that, you know, the white people are never going to let you um, have your own stuff like you can with the blacks. I mean, I noticed that, like, you know, there's certain levels. But in Uganda, I don't feel like there's no level I can't really reach, yeah, yeah. if that makes sense, yeah. or, in, or in the black world. Yeah. There might be some envy and yeah. things like that, but you'll you'll still get there. Yeah. You'll still reach it. Whereas in London, yeah. I felt like that. In, yeah. Like I'm a DJ, yes, but mm -hmm. in London, I had to supplement that with work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I got to a very high level in the construction yes. industry. Yes. And whenever I just subconsciously did something that my white colleagues did, yes. it just threw them out of joint. Mm -hmm. yes, I called a course. meeting on site and I didn't go straight into the office. I went straight to the meeting and came to the office after. They're like, How could you but, do but I sit down there, but that's exactly what you do. No, but now I do it. Mm. 
it's an issue because they don't see me on their level. They see mm, me down there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like, don't mm. do what we do. You're not us. You're yeah, not exactly. Like, you know exactly. Saying? Exactly. So, yeah. So with that, so I'm glad you mentioned that and I, I'm going to close out because mm. I feel like, you know, I have ownership of what I do. We were talking about yeah. the, this podcast and how excited yeah. we were and Very what our opportunities would mm. be. We wouldn't have this opportunity if we were in London. Maybe, mm. depending, but not like this. It's yeah. different. Yeah. What we're doing, we have more opportunity in the black world, which is the biggest opportunity, right? So if you talk like that guy and you're black, you're 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 never going to have anything. But the white people who talk like that have what they have because that's how they feel about themselves. That's the difference. That's why Asians can do what they do. Not to say that they're racist, but white people you talking to look, look, we are who we are. And I, and here's another thing: they can cancel me, but I'll still get some support from my community. And 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 I've seen people where there was a shooting where this this white kid I forgot he got he he killed these people, um like he got off, but the white community raised like a half a million dollars mm-hmm. for this guy, right? Mm. And he can talk like that because I know that if they cancel me, white folks are gonna give me a million dollars. Yeah. That's what white people know. They're going to support. So until we get to that level as a group of blacks, because how many people will step up for black people and end up getting nothing? And we forget about each other the next day. So I still feel like, you know, the blacks who feel like that are the people that if we can reach them, we can. If we can't, that's fine. But the blacks with his white mentality is the problem. Mm-hmm. And again, two Negroes fault. You did it. Okay, this one. <laughs> if you have his mentality, you did it to yourself. This one I agree. Change yeah. your mindset, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank true. you for your remarks. Mine would be different because, you know, I'm not. I don't interact with white people that much. Um, Amen. So, <laughs> my perspective is so different from you guys because I'm yeah. just a Ugandan. and I haven't gone to any. I've not gone abroad. I've not gone to. I've not been to the UK. I've not been to the US, but I'll be there soon, mm. inshallah. <laughs> but I'm just saying like my my perspective is definitely different because I, if I see a white person, I'm just like, mm, there's a white person. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. okay. There's no trauma for you. It's just like, okay, you exist <laughs> moving on, you know? Okay. But yeah, but I'm learning from you guys. Um, um, You guys sharing experience is actually really enlightening because the things that I learned from you people, no, you people, the things that I learned <laughs> from you people, my dear, <laughs> you people, <laughs> the things that I learned from you guys are yeah. amazing. And it's, it's so good. Uh, you know, we're always on a journey to learn. And I hope that That's whoever it. is watching That's this, it. is also on a journey to learn, but tell the people where they can find you if they want to learn more. Yeah. DJ maintain on all social mediums. Mm-hmm. Tina Graham on Instagram. Okay. At Elshay Duke, please do not message me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms at King and the Nation. Also subscribe to the Pan-African Dating Show. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.